NCAA men's basketball fans are getting ready to watch their favorite teams and celebrate this weekend in San Antonio. A general land office contract that pays the Alamo CEO $2,000 a day could turn into more than double the earnings of what Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush made all of last year. The Fair Housing Council of Greater San Antonio joins other advocates in a federal lawsuit against Facebook for discrimination in housing advertisements. And despite an injury that knocked him out of the previous game, a double-double by LaMarcus Aldridge helps push the Spurs into fourth in the NBA's Western Conference in their 103-99 victory over OKC. We've already been uh, offensively challenged this year, so you know when I'm not in the game, it it makes it you know even even harder on us. So I thought guys definitely you know felt more comfortable you know, that I was out there. I'm Chance Dorland with your express briefing for Friday, March 30th. Subscribe to this and other free content at expressnews.com slash podcasts and get each day's top news and sports headlines delivered to your inbox at expressnews.com slash newsletters. While downtown San Antonio is swarming with college basketball fans, that's just one group you'll see around town this weekend. Most national TV broadcasters are expected to arrive Friday or Saturday for Final Four festivities and games, and radio and TV sports legend Dan Patrick has already set up shop for live broadcasts on the Riverwalk and spectators are welcome. Downtown, you may also encounter two or more of as many as 3,900 Jehovah's Witnesses who are in town for a special two-week project to share their beliefs that has already been used at other big sporting events like the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, the Summer Games in Rio de Janeiro, and Super Bowls in both Houston and Minneapolis. Under a contract that runs through September, the General Land Office is paying Alamo CEO Douglas McDonald $2,000 a day to oversee the state-owned shrine for up to 14 days a month. And with compensation potentially reaching $336,000, McDonald could earn more than double what Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush earned all of last year. But GLO spokesman Brian Preston says McDonald puts in far more hours than the contract requires and bills fewer days than he works. With the $2,000 a day rate, quote, negotiated based on fair market value for the services he provides to a museum of the importance and prominence of the Alamo. While the historic battlefield falls under the general land office, the Alamo and its multi-year master plan are managed by a series of nonprofit entities on which the land commissioner is a board member. Alamo management has become a hot-button issue for Bush as he faces pressure from state lawmakers and former Republican primary challengers to make operations at the shrine more transparent. Following their investigation of Facebook using fictitious housing ads for property in the San Antonio area, The Fair Housing Council of Greater San Antonio has joined the National Fair Housing Alliance and other organizations in a lawsuit against the social media giant. The AP's Jackie Quinn has more. The National Fair Housing Alliance and other groups are alleging that Facebook allows landlords and real estate brokers to target ads toward their ideal tenants and exclude families with children, women, and people with disabilities. They say Facebook collects a treasure trove of information and then allows advertisers to include or exclude certain users based on demographics and their interests. Facebook says the lawsuit is without merit and it will defend itself vigorously. While none of the incidents specifically identified Facebook, San Antonio's Fair Housing Council says in the last three years, it has seen a rise in complaints from consumers claiming housing providers refused to rent to them or treated them differently due to their renter's profile. And despite a recent injury to star LaMarcus Aldridge, the Spurs pulled off a win against OKC. 
Hello everyone, it's Jabari Young here at the AT&T Center after the Spurs beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 103-99. to Again, LaMarcus Aldridge was phenomenal. 19 of his uh, 23 points coming in, of 25 points coming in the first half. Uh, second half, he kind of cooled off a little bit, but when the Spurs needed some big shots, when they needed uh, some some energy, uh, Patty Mills was that guy. Davis Patron said some big shots. Rudy Gay was good, pretty good, solid. DeJounte Murray, you know, Greg Popovich said it was his best game as a pro, but Patty Mills was the guy who not only hit big shots, uh, you know, didn't have his best shooting night as he finished three of uh, 12 from the field, three of nine coming from three. But when the Spurs needed it most, a big time three coming in the fourth quarter, Patty Mills was the guy who hit it, giving them a four point lead. And the Spurs never looked back from there. After he hit that big shot, Patty Mills turned around and just let off a yell looking in the rafters. And you got kind of got a sense that the Spurs fed off that momentum, fed off that particular possession where Patty Mills was, uh, you know, letting off so much energy. And they even confirmed that after the game. But I asked, asked Patty Mills, I said, what were you feeling when you hit that shot? And you turned around and screamed. He says it was just a relief. You know, it was a lot of balls going in and out and a lot of shots not falling. At that particular time, it was relief. It paid off big time. Oh, for sure. Um, I think you know the, the way that I play with that with that energy and being able um, for it to come out of me and, and everyone to, to see it. I think that's the, the passion that I play with. Um, you know, when you see it in Manu as, as well. But you know, for us to um, let that out of us so that everyone can see it and kind of feed off it, I think that that's really important. So you know, whether it's a shot, whether it's a defensive play, whatever, whether it's someone else making a play, you know, it, it's the kind of the same reaction to them, but, um, you know, it's all to kind of, um, f- you know, let other guys feed off that energy, that positive energy, the, the good vibes only. Now up next, the San Antonio Spurs have another tough task. Milo Ginobili came in, coming into this game on Thursday against the Thunder. He said that the Spurs had to win one of these two against the Thunder or the Houston Rockets, and they got their one win. Now they're trying to get a little greedy and make it two. Rockets coming in here on Sunday or early game. Spurs know they need to be on their best. They have to play their best basketball, specifically on the defensive end, especially on the defensive end, where they've been pretty solid these last uh, 10 games where they're 7-3 and three in that span. And so now they have to another tough task. But uh, even if you get the sense they lose that game, at least they won this one against Oklahoma City. Season series now tied 2-2. Uh, and uh, we'll see if the Spurs can hang on to that number four spot. Number four was on the line tonight. The Spurs now owners of number four. See if they can keep it that way on Sunday. For all your Spurs news and notes, remember it's a one-stop shop, expressnews.com. And that's your daily San Antonio Express News briefing for Friday, March 30th. Subscribe to this and other free content at expressnews.com slash podcasts. I'm Chance Dorland.